Care Award of Sports here with Tom Loeffler, uh, CEO of uh, K2 Promotions. Tell us, man, first I want to talk about this card, man. I didn't get to talk to you at the, the last press conference. I mean, I love it, man. I love the middleweight madness, you know, the playoff of March, all that. Um, just tell us how excited are you to finally just have someone, you know, who actually wants to fight Gennady. I mean, was it kind of refreshing to hear Daniel actually calling him out and wanting the fight, pushing for the fight? It really was. I mean, it's uh, it was a mandatory fight. Daniel's uh, has a WBA uh, uh, title and uh, Gennady's a super champion, but um, WBA mandated it, mandated it. It was never any hesitation from Gennady's side wanting to defend the title against the best possible uh, people that he could get in the ring, and and uh, and there was uh, clearly no hesitation from uh, Danny Jacobs' side either. They they always wanted the fight. It took a little bit longer to work out the details, but once it was worked out, the fan reaction has been tremendous. Uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day weekend, March 18th at the Garden, uh, the, the two top middleweights in the world fighting each other. It's kind of a throwback fight. We have, each guy has so many knockouts between the two of them. I think there's 35 knockouts uh, currently as a streak. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fireworks. You know, we're here today with the uh, Carlos Quadras media lunch. And when you have someone like Quadras fighting on the show, when you have Chocotito Gonzalez fighting on the show against Rungvasai, uh, Ryan Martin's on the show. It's, uh, it's a tremendous, uh, tremendous show uh, for all the fans, whether they go live to the Garden, which uh, right now it's, uh, it's uh, selling above where we were with the Lemieux fight, which sold out. And um, whether it's live uh, in the arena, which is a great atmosphere, or uh, watching it on the on the pay-per-view, I think uh, the fans will get uh, a great value for the show. I was asking uh, Danny the other day at the press conference. I was like, "You have a 91% KO ratio. Gennady has a 92% KO ratio. Is there even a, a need to hire judges that now?" <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a safe bet. But we're not going to see the 12th round in that fight. Um, it, it's clearly the the, the toughest. Uh, challenge for both fighters. Danny Jacobs is uh, is physically bigger than Gennady. He's got, like you said, he's got 91% uh, knockout ratio. Uh, whenever you can knock out Peter Cullen, who was undefeated at the time in the first round, the way he uh, overwhelmed him was a tremendous statement. Gennady has a 23 KO uh, streak in a row right now, so um, there's two big forces colliding in the ring on the 18th, and uh, like you said, I don't think we're going to need judges for that fight. Uh, let's talk about this card. Obviously, we're here for Carlos Quadras. He's going to be on the card. You also have Roman Chocolatito, who's fighting um, the guy that Quadras won his title from. I mean, that's a great fight. Um, I mean, tell us about all that, how that all came, came together, and being able to kind of put it all in a package for us fans and a pay-per-view together. Well, once we were able to make the fight with... Uh, with Gennady and Danny Jacobs, then it's always been a great combination, actually the best combination in boxing, having uh, Triple G and Chocotito on the same show. I mean, the fans have responded to it, you know, the top two pound for pound fighters in the world fighting uh, on the same show has, has always gotten great, uh, great results and uh, a great response from the fans. And then uh, Chocotito had such a close fight with uh, Quadras last year. It was uh, one, of the, one of the best fights of the year. So having uh, Quadras on the show as well. Um, you mentioned uh, Rungvasai, uh, Sister Kets or Rungvasai. He's from uh, he's from Thailand. Uh, he's a former champion, but a big puncher. And uh, Chocotito is going to have his hands full uh, that night. So it's it's really uh, come together nicely, uh, adding all the different elements uh, to the show. And uh, we're excited for it. I want to ask you. Uh Triple G's last pay-per-view did 150k uh, buys, um, which you know is respectable, being the first one that he was ever on. Are there goals for this one? Do you guys have a number in mind that you're trying to hit with this one? You know, there, there's no uh, goals. Uh, we'd like to do more than the last one. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, I'd like to think that we'll we'll hit that because uh, Danny Jacobs is uh, clearly, uh, you know, had more exposure than uh, Lemieux did. Um, uh, Chocotito is now at a higher level than he was when, when he fought on that show. Quadra is now added to the show. Ryan Martin added to the show. So um, I, I really think uh, we're going to get a great response. Uh, Gennady has uh, really become, since the uh, Lemieux fight, where unified the uh, the IBF title, um, has really taken off. You know, after selling out the O2 Arena, then selling out here at the Forum, uh, you know, he's really able to carry 
uh, shows, and, and we've seen it, the response from the from the fans. You know, the ticket sales are tremendous. Danny Jacobs brings a big fan base with him. Gennady brings uh, pretty much every fan base with him across the board, every demographic. Uh, he's just a likable guy. He's exciting in the ring. He's likable outside the ring. You know, both Danny and Gennady are two great ambassadors for the sport of boxing, both very well-spoken, um, two great role models. And... Uh, it's uh, it's it's not the antics outside the ring that the fans are responding to. It's the quality of the matchups inside the ring, and that's what we're that's what we're seeing with this fight. To speak on. I was excited to hear you said there's going to be a 24/7 uh, leading up for this fight. How many episodes are we seeing? Kind of speak on just the excitement of being able to kind of showcase these guys outside, kind of let the fans in a little bit, and then be able to you know build up the paper. Well, we're definitely investing in the marketing on this fight. There will be a 24/7 that they're going to film on both uh, Gennady and and uh, Danny Jacobs. Uh, uh, HBO filmed a two-day special on uh, Chocotito after the last fight, um, so they're going to air that as well. That'll be aired the, the week before on March 11th, and uh, the 24/7th is going to be aired uh, two weeks before on March 4th. Um, they're they're going to be showing replays of uh, Triple G previous fights, the replay of the Quadras Chocotito fight, and also a uh, replay of uh, the Danny Jacobs fight. I believe the one uh, with uh, Ishe Smith. So um, you know the fans will get. Definitely a great buildup uh, for this fight. I um, want to ask you another fight on the horizon for K2, uh, Joshua versus Klitschko. Yeah. You guys had the press conference uh, two days ago. New York, yeah. Yeah, in New York. Uh, just tell us about that fight, man. I can't wait to watch that matchup. Tell us about the, the kind of, you know, the, the kind of classic uh, matchup between, you know, like the, the proven champion kind of fighting the young lion. Tell us about it. I mean, it really is the classic uh, matchup. Uh, Vladimir has such a historic run uh, as a heavyweight champion. You know, over uh, 10 years as a champion, you know, fighting everybody. And uh, now you have uh, 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 Anthony Joshua, who's undefeated, uh, all wins by knockout. He's an Olympic gold medalist. Vladimir was Olympic gold medalist in 96. And uh, when you have two forces like that colliding, I mean, you see the fan reaction there, you know, 90,000 tickets at uh, Wembley Stadium is, uh, is a tremendous response, tremendous event. And, you know, you got uh, arguably the two best heavyweights um, in the world right now. You have the, the young guy trying to take the, the throne from Vladimir. Vladimir had an off night against Tyson Fury, but I've never seen him so driven to get his titles back. And, uh, you know, and with... Uh, you know his name that he's established. Uh, it's just uh, when you have them uh, fighting each other in the heavyweight division, it'll be uh, that, that's a great matchup. Uh, Want to get your take? It kind of involves Gennady a little bit, uh, just being that you know the the weight issue with Canelo. But now you know Canelo's fighting Chavez at 164 and a half. What was your take on that when you first heard that? And, and just kind of on the whole of the weight situation with Gennady, and now like he's cool going in four and a half pounds heavier. Now Canelo has surpassed Gennady. Now now Canelo's fighting as a super as a super middleweight. Um, but you know, look, that's a great matchup uh, when you can have two great Mexican uh, warriors like that fighting against each other. Uh, that's a that's a great matchup. Um, you know, it'd be great if we can uh, make the Canelo fight for this year. Um, Gennady's 100% focused on Danny Jacobs. Canelo, I'm sure, is uh, that's a dangerous fight for him. Uh, you don't know, uh, you know, how heavy uh, Chavez is going to come in the ring. You saw what happened with Sergio Martinez after that 12th round. Even though Sergio won the fight after that 12th round, it looked like uh, Sergio was never the same. You know, with his knee injuries and and uh, you know Chavez is a big puncher. So uh, that's a that's a classic matchup. And uh, you know, if both guys are, are uh, victorious. Then it'll be great to, to see them fight this year. Um, I've been in uh, extended conversations with Golden Boy, and uh, if we can make that fight happen for uh, September, I think uh, that's the fight everyone in boxing is looking forward to. I actually asked Jim Lampley about that this past weekend, about Chavez Canelo, and he said that Canelo's doing this because he didn't want to fight Triple G in September and have a bunch of Mexicans wearing Triple G hats. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he said that would have happened had he not had he not found a bigger fight to fight. It's possible. I mean, uh, Canelo took a lot of heat when uh, when he vacated the title instead of fighting uh, Gennady. Um, you know, what can you do? Uh, instead of bad mouthing someone, we're just trying to you know stay positive, trying to make the fight. Um, if the fight happens a year later, that's a lot better than some of the big fights that have uh, happened out there. So. Um, and 
is certainly if it happens uh, this year, look, if Gennady can be successful against Danny Jacobs, if he's able to sell out MSG again, that'll be a second time on pay-per-view. Uh, Canelo and Chavez should be a successful pay-per-view, so that'll make the fight even bigger. But uh, again, it doesn't matter the plans that I make ahead of time. It's uh, really uh, um, uh, both guys have to have to win, and and uh, the, the, absolutely nobody on the Triple G side is overlooking Denny Jacobs. Uh, it's clearly his most dangerous, uh, most dangerous opponent, and. Uh, if there's a misstep on March 18th, all of a sudden Danny Jacobs has all the middleweight titles and Gennady is going to be out there uh, chasing them again. So um, it's, uh, it, it, it's definitely a great year in 2017, I think, for boxing, especially um, you know, for the middleweight division. And uh, I, I think Gennady is going to have a, a, a huge year this year. Well, it's definitely a great card. March 18th, catch it, HBO pay-per-view. Thank you, Tom, so much for the time. Thank, Thank you for you. putting on the card, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.